Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the After Hours Gaming League Season 4 B-League Playoffs from the round of 16 between Cerner and Qualcomm. If you haven't seen game number one, I highly recommend you check that out first. But if you have, I'm going to go ahead and just assume that you have at this point. We're going to go ahead and jump in, introduce the players in game number two as we spawn down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the map on top of the purple Protoss player representing Team Qualcomm. It is going to be Qualcomm's Tsunami. And his opponent spawning up here in the top left-hand corner of the map, King Sejong Station. We have the red Protoss player representing Team Cerner. It is Cerner's Corthog. And it is going to be another PvP. And now, just quick notes, Corthog right now sitting 5-2. Very, very comfortably 5-2 in the HGL. And currently unranked as of the time that he played this match. Uh... And uh, Tsunami, actually, sitting 4-4. Four and four. So dead even, 50% win rate. That's nothing to scoff at. But it's sitting in Gold League. So we do have some, maybe some idea of where Tsunami is sitting at skill-wise. Although MMR Decay has really messed with things lately. And uh, it looks like Tsunami not going to be taking any chances in this game. Doesn't want to get proxy 2 gated or any of that kind of shenanigans happening in this game no cannon rushes so he sent out a very very early probe scout for a pvp i mean sending it out after the pylon you sacrifice quite a bit of your economy but you have that reassurance of okay you're not doing anything too funky right now it looks like if you have your gateway and your pylon and your gas geysers going down and everything is looking hunky dory i can go ahead and play out a standard game now i don't have to do anything crazy like throw down a second gateway to counteract your gateways or forge to counteract your cannons um in the meanwhile we do have Cornhog sending out a slightly later probe sending out after that gateway so this is kind of like the more normal safe timing uh some players do like to send it out after the cybernetic score and you might be wondering why it's such a big deal this early on in the game well honestly when you send out your workers that early on, that is a larger percentage of your economy. You mine much slower. So that means you're losing out on 50 to 60 minerals per minute. So if you send that out incredibly early in the game, those 50 to 60 minerals means that potentially your gateway is delayed or, you know, your next tech building or your next pylon just kind of adds up. Maybe your next pro maybe you have to cut one of your probes. So now, now your next probe is delayed. That probe could have been mining another, you know, 20 minerals. It just all constantly adds up. But man, I really like players in PvP who do a great job of hiding these probes. Now, this is actually a great location, by the way. I'm pretty sure that once, uh, you know, the latter season's over, everyone's going to know King Sejong Station. Protoss players like to hide their probes on this cliffside. That's a note for all of you ladder players right now. And look, the proxy pylon goes up along this cliffside. It's the absolute perfect location for most Protoss players because it's a reasonably close distance to the natural expansion or the main base. You can warp in a couple of units, but hold that thought. We're not going to have any kind of tech that's going to require uh, warping in for at least a little bit. We have a Stargate being thrown out relatively early for Tsunami off of just this one gateway. It does have a single Stalker out of them. Does he even have a Mothership Core? No, no Mothership Core just yet. Not even bothered to produce it. He does have six guys mining gas though so he should be able to get one if he so chooses to but if we take a look at uh Cornhog right now as well he's not really opting to get a mothership core either and that could be really really a lot of that could cause a lot of problems for Cornhog over here from team cerner because you have to realize if we end up seeing what i think we're gonna end up seeing oh twilight council oh no. Okay, guys, this is this only leads into two different possibilities. This either leads into a Blink Stalker play, which I don't think is going to be the case because there's no reason to proxy that then, or it leads into Dark Templars. Dark Shrine will be proxied over here and just makes it really, really hard to scout. But Tsunami has a Stargate. He's making an Oracle. Oracles can detect Dark Templar. If Tsunami makes a second Oracle, he should actually be okay. At least he can Chrono Boost out another Oracle to try and detect. And it looks like the Dark Shrine is going to be the tech choice for Cornhog. Oh man, this could be a very, very devastating situation for Cornhog because the Oracle can come in over here, potentially deal some nice damage, but look at this. Actually, Cornhog is already prepared for the Oracle. It's like he already knows exactly what's going on. And uh, he actually is just, he has his Starkers ready to deal with the Oracle. It's sitting in his mineral line. This Oracle is now moving across the map. It has not been spotted really, but I don't think it's going to matter. 
The Zealot is even kind of positioning itself a little bit further forward. He can spot it out a little bit earlier on, and now the Oracle is going to have to back out. Well, how many kills does he actually manage to get? He might be able to kill off a single Zealot, but that is not how much damage you want to do, considering how you invest into the Oracle. And the Oracle is going to be useful for the Dark Templars that are going to be coming out, as now we end up having another Proxypelon coming up. The Dark Shrine is going to be finishing up very, very soon. Do we have a second Oracle out on the map? No second Oracle out on the map. No second Oracle being made, but the Oracle is retreating back home. It's going to have enough uh, energy for a Envision very, very soon. 50 energy, and he's sitting around 45 right now. The three Dark Templar. Oh, man, this is a big commitment for Kornhog. If Kornhog doesn't manage to actually at least get out of there with one or two of these Dark Templar, that's going to be an enormous loss. That's 125 gas for each one of these Dark Templars, guys. That is 375 gas. That is an absurd amount of gas. And oh, the Dark Templars are now taking out a lot of probes. These probes, oh my god, this probe kill count has already been outstanding. 14 probes killed. This has already been worth it so far for Kornhog. As you can now see, 17 probes left over. A sentry gets picked off. The Oracle is now envisioning, but the Dark Templar, the Stalkers, they're not chasing after the Dark Templar. A pylon going to go down as well. The DT is now retreating away. Tsunami having a little bit of miscontrol. Not really uh, bringing his army units oh, in conjunction with the, the rest of his units that can actually detect like the Oracle. And now we have Kornog in an absolutely beautiful position. These stalkers are going to be going after the Oracle for Kor- Oh my god, Tsunami might lose the Oracle! The Oracle's the only thing that can even detect right now! Okay, the Oracle does manage to get away, and it does have enough energy for an Envision coming up very, very soon, but he has to be so careful that Oracle could just get picked off if he tries to come back and detect these ZTs. And now we have Kornog moving back in. The stalkers going after the Void Ray. They know that if they can take out the Void Ray, there's not a whole lot that these DTs cannot kill. The Void Ray does survive, though. These stalkers going after another Proxy Pile in front. I'm Kornhog, what on earth? Kornhog is so greedy with these proxy bottles, just planting them br br brazenly or, uh, you know, whatever, right in front of his opponent's face. It's just saying you can't do anything about it. And now we have, once again, the Stalkers coming in, cleans up that Oracle. A second Oracle is now out for Tsunami, but is it even going to matter? The DTs are wreaking havoc on the pylons, and very soon, the Cybernetic Core and one of the Warp Gates sets depowered. A Photon Overcharge gets utilized on the uh, the Nexus, so now these Stalkers may to be taking a little bit of damage over here. Tsunami could actually try and do some nice damage over here on the Stalkers, but this Nexus is almost certainly going to go down at the same time. He's going to be going for a Nexus of his own. His charge has actually been researching this entire time, so he has a nice follow-up as well. He works on a couple of Zealots, and boom, charges finishes up, and it picks off one more Zealot. The Oracle comes back in over here, trying to deal some nice damage to the Stalkers, but honestly, with that Oracle getting picked off, there is no longer any kind of detection. No more Oracles on the way. These... DTs are going to clean up the entire rest of the game. A photon cannon is going down. But is this really going to be able to do a whole lot over here? More Zealots, more Stalkers already over there. GG well played gets called. And it looks like Cerner's Corn Dog. <laughs> I almost called him a Horn Dog. Cerner's Corn Hog going to be taking game number two and evening up the series one to one. So with that being said, guys, that is going to bring this to a tie series. We're going to be jumping into game number three of this best of five. So I will see you guys in just a little bit.